to start with, I'm going to come to Tom Redman. Let me tell you just a little bit about Big Bus and then Tom, bring it to life for us. I have the privilege of working with Big Bus now for ooh, nearly 10 years. And Big Bus works in major cities around the world. I'm in Dublin. And this afternoon, I'm going on the Big Bus tour of Dublin. Fabulous uh, experience to be on a Big Bus guided tours. Amazing. In March 2020, I was working with Andrew Smith, who leads the team in San Francisco, and the mayor of uh, the uh, governor of, of the state of California closed the state, effectively went in lockdown. Now, I was therefore there with a leader who had to make decisions. What do you do? Your, your business stops overnight, and there's no certainty when it reopens. So that's the kind of decision making that Tom and his colleagues who lead in the cities had to make. So that just gives you a little bit of a background about the business and the challenges. Tom, tell us a little bit about Big Bus London. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, um, Big Bus London, we're, we're probably very familiar to, to many people who, who come to London. If you, if you commute through London or if you come regularly for, for social visits, um, we're, we're open top sightseeing buses. Um, we are a business that has about 70 vehicles um, and, and as you can imagine, extremely seasonal in, in, its, in its nature, um, with the summer being very, very busy um, and the winter period being not quite so busy um, and obviously very weather dependent, um, which leads to a lot of very, very quick decision making um, that we need to do in order to, to manage the business both commercially and operationally to ensure that we're delivering the best product. But the, the business itself is, is, is very much one that's um, had to really remold and, and have this new lease of life almost um, from where it was back in March 2020. Um, and thankfully, all for the better, certainly up to now. Um, so, yeah, long may that continue. Now, Tom, you, you, I saw you last week and you said it's probably the best year ever. It's really vibrant now, and that's brilliant to hear. How, how do you make decisions? How, you know, and as you said, the nature of your business means on a daily basis, you have to make decisions about your fleet, about the people, all of those sorts of things. How do you actually make decisions? Um, it's, it's, it, it can be very challenging. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't lie. You know, it's, it's um, a very high-paced business where there's no day the same. Um, we spend a lot of time, they, 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 there, there isn't a lot of time to kind of dilly-dally on decisions. We just need to decide what we're going to do and how we're going to make it happen. Um, I kind of live by the mantra that um, for it to be a good decision, it only needs to be 51% um, in, in terms of the majority of, of where I see it. So if I think it's 51% good and 49% bad, then the good outweighs the bad. Therefore, I should probably go with it. Um, a lot of decision making that we make in this industry that I make day to day is is kind of very much informed gut decisions. And what I mean by that is over many years, I've seen many different scenarios play out. Um, and when we're making decisions about how many vehicles we should be running, how many drivers we should have in, how many tour guides we should have on the buses, um, a lot of that is down to weather. It's down to um, whether we're in a, a school holiday, for example, so we've got the Easter holidays coming up very soon. So we're very much gearing up towards the Easter holidays, which can be an extremely busy time for us um, and, and what we would call the start of our season. So we're having to make decisions now that actually won't actually come to fruition for another four or five weeks. Um, and they could change the day before, because if the weather's really bad, we may decide to reverse on some of those. So um, some of the key things that we really look at, uh, how many people do we have employed as a business? Um, and how many people are flexible within that employment. So uh, we spend a lot of time looking at um, people who, who offer us availability and prefer to work on a casual basis versus full-time. That gives us the flexibility to kind of pick up service when we want to and, and pull it away when we think there's not going to be much there. Um, but those decisions are, are made very much, I would say, 24 to 48 hours before the, the event. And um, it's all a little bit of gut feel and, and having trust in your decision making, you know, you've got to that everybody will make a mistake. And I think as long as you're happy that you can make a mistake from time to time, but you don't make the same mistake twice, then making bad decisions is not such a bad thing. Because if everybody made 100% good decisions, 
um, that would be completely unrealistic. And, and, and that just isn't the case. So, you know, if I make a bad decision, um, owning that bad, bad decision and saying, Do you know what, I'm not going to make that bad decision again is no bad thing, in my opinion. Thank you. And I'm hearing lots of things around back yourself, trust yourself. There is a gut instinct there, but there's also many, many years. You've been in the business many years, Tom. There's a lot of retained knowledge of decisions made in the past that now enables you to be relatively instinctive, but actually informed. And that's that lovely balance of emotion and logic. And crucially, back yourself. I'm getting that, you know, if I've got 51%, I just, I'm swaying that way. Go for it, but go for it wholeheartedly. Would you say that's right? Yeah, 100%. You know, I think um, over the years, I've, I've spent a lot of time <laughs> basically not backing myself and thinking, oh, I'm, I'm not sure this is the right thing to do. And then the next day going, oh, I wish I'd done that. Why didn't I do it? Um, and actually, I've just tried to reverse that psychology where I say, actually, do you know what? If it goes wrong, I know how to fix it because that's my retained knowledge. But, you know, you've got to be big and brave sometimes and say it is the right thing to do. Um, I know what to do if it's not going well. So go with your gut instinct, go with your 51% majority, um, but know how to have some sort of contingency plan as well. So, you know, for us, we always have a kind of contingency plan on what are we going to do if the plan isn't going as we'd set out. Um, and as long as you've got that contingency plan, then the, the big, bold decision is the right thing to do. And it's very easy to back yourself, in my opinion. That's yeah, really cool. I'm hearing this in the moment. And it's, it's why I'm delighted you're on this call, Tom, because the nature of your business is probably very different to most people on the call who probably don't have to make big decisions on a daily basis, but you do. But I love this principle of boldness because it comes from what you think, doesn't it? If the, if the thought is, I can't make mistakes, you're not going to make many big decisions. So if the thought is, back myself, go for, be, be courageous, to use your word, and have a contingency plan, that just, that's, that's plan B, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, that's got to filter down as well through the through the team, you know, they've got to be aware that if my mantra is, you know, if you make a mistake, you're not going to, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, we learn from our mistakes. It makes us better at what we do. Um, if everybody else who's working for me has that same mantra, then together we're all doing the same thing. We've all got the same vision. We've all got the same, um, uh, we're all pulling together in the same direction to create the same really good thing. So it, I guess it's one of those where, you know, nobody, kind of falls on a sword on their own you know we're, we're all one big team and if it's going a little bit wrong then we all pull together to try and make it right um and and it's, it's really important it's been a really important part of our recovery well i'd love to uh, i've got two more questions tom the, the the next one is about family because one of the things that makes your business great in my uh, experience is that there's such a strong family feel to it i see the same people whichever city i go to that i saw three four five years ago how do you make these tough decisions? Because sometimes it means I don't get to work that day, right? If you, you decide we're not going to run extra buses and I'm a bus driver, I, I don't get to work that day. How do you keep a, an environment where people feel cared about? What do you do to make those kind of um, application of decisions? I, I think you, you have to set the expectation very early. Um, so when people join Big Bus and when people come and work for me, it's it's... I'm, I'm very keen to ensure that they completely understand the full picture of our business. Um, so ensuring that they're a hundred percent aware that there are going to be days where the work will dry up, but there is going to be better times as well. Um, we've got a saying here at big bus that we use, which is used, I know, you know, worldwide, but for us, it's make hay while the sun shines. And that's the same for all the staff as well. And they really understand that when they join the business and, and that transparency, open and honesty, um, with them enables them to to not be disappointed when perhaps there isn't quite as much work for people um, but when the work is there they're they're driven they're they're they, they come in very powerful because they they want to do their very best um, and, and also I guess there's there's an element of um, because of the seasonal nature of our business there are opportunities come the end of the season for people to stay on full-time contracts. And we kind of make those decisions throughout the summer. So, 
Um, there's a lot of people who join our business, maybe in their first or second season, who are really looking to make a statement and say, I'm one of the ones you want to keep. Um, and once those guys have made the statement, then often it's very hard to come back from that because these guys are often ambitious. They're coming in and they're wanting to really show that they can be ones that we can rely on, people that we can call upon whenever we need to call upon staff. Um, and, and yeah, so, so that transparency is, is, is absolutely a two-way street. Um, and we make sure that staff are fully, fully aware of what they're getting into when they join Big Bus. Thank you, Tom. I'm hearing get the expectation super clear right from the start. Be transparent and be together. I noticed behind you, and this uh, Mark Harry's called this out in chat, behind you is a chart with colour energies, personality types. It is. Red, yellow, green and blue. Tell me a little bit about how you as a leader are conscious about style and personality. Yeah, I, I, um, it, I, my style is very, very different to a lot of the people who work for me. Um, but I think it lends itself to, to, to being very, very good at what we do. You know, I'm, I'm very much a yellow. Um, I, I spend very little time sat behind a computer screen looking at the detail. But, but a lot of the people who work for me are very keen to have that detail. Um, so being, being open and honest with yourself, I think, about your color style and, and where you sit in that chart, what you do really, really well, and some of the things that you perhaps need to spend more time focusing on, as long as you're aware of them, I think it's very easy to bring them to life. So for me, I know that I'm not very blue. Um, I know that I, I kind of lack the, the finer detail that some people really want. So I consciously have to tell myself, you know, don't be so yellow. Let's, let's, let's bring yourself into the blue zone so that people can talk to you kind of um, as they would expect, you know, for, for me to speak to them, rather than being perhaps at times a little bit blasé. Um, but equally, um, we go through the color charts with every single person who joins this business. So they fully understand too, where they sit and how I may be feeling about certain situations so that when they come to me as a blue person, they can adapt their style as well. Um, we actually go through the color chart, um, probably once a year with every single member of staff, um, every single member of staff gets to reset it, see if they've changed. Um, some people do, some people do change, some people are very, very consistent. Um, but I think it's important that we share the information of where we are, again, adding to the transparency that I was just talking about. I think it's great for other people to know exactly what color, st what color style you are. And we're very vocal about that. And we want people to really understand that, that everybody's different, but it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't make you any worse than what you do, any better than what you do. Um, we just need to understand that not everybody does everything in the same way. That's awesome, Tom. I'm going to play this back. For those who haven't come across Color Energies, Color Insights before, the yellow energy, Tom says that's his predominant characteristic. It's about positivity. It's about big ideas. It's not about the detail. And blue energy is about analysis, data, structure, do things the, the correct way. And so they're very different energies. And, and why I loved you sharing that is to be kind as a leader, you adapt in your communication style to your audience. If you just stick to your own way and say it's my way or the highway, you won't take people with you as readily. And that's the key point. Mm -hmm. Tom, thank you very much for sharing so much of how you lead and how you make decisions. I love that courageous, back yourself and have a contingency plan. What I'm going to ask everyone, inspired by what we've just heard, is in your own particular situation, and we're all wonderfully different, what big decision, I'm going to give you one minute working on your own, everybody, what big decision do you think you can make even better as a result of what you've heard from Tom? 